allow us to journey into these altered states. It really whacked me psyche though, big time. If you just sit reading books, you know, it's the shadow because you're not going to be in your body. Welcome to Creating Space. Bringing people together. Real conversations with real people. Telling stories and sharing our gifts right here in the heart of Liverpool. Inspiring new ideas, education and co-creation. Choose a challenge that lights you up and is going to make a difference in the world. Creating Space. Sponsored by the Scouse Guru app. Okay, welcome back. This is episode 18 of Creating Space podcast with me, Martin Bone. Um, <clears throat> so, today I've got three men in the studio. I mean, a lot of the podcasts just seem to be male related, but I'm, uh, I'm going with it. And I'd like to say I've got um, two new friends of mine in the studio. Two guys I've met over um, probably the past six months who've personally done some work with me. Um, in the realm of the meditation and human behaviour. Um, but really getting to know these guys over the last six months, I've been um, almost invited to explore a totally new world um, in Liverpool, a world that I'm aware of, but a world that I've never really um, paid much attention to. And it's the world of AA. It's the world of the, of the 12 Steps programme. Um you know, these guys uh, in the studio today are um, are both ex-addicts, um, you know, and, and used substances throughout their lives. But they both now work um, in, a, um, in an establishment in Liverpool. We've got Tony here who works for Bridge House and we've got Ian who works for Tom Harrison House. And we've actually got a... Um, uh, we've actually got Matt come back. We got we got Matt in the studio, <laughs> you know, and and Matt's uh, here to sort of represent me, and you know, because we're here to talk about addictions, and we're here to talk about, um, you know, men's work and 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 health in general. But we're also here to just tell our story and have a buzz. So, gentlemen, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really you. glad you're here. Um, you know, and just introducing that there, I was almost wondering where to start, but I know when we get into a flow of things and we start really having a buzz with it, um, you know, it'll just go into, it'll go where it's meant to go. I, I have to thank you for being here. You know, it's it's not hard getting behind, uh, it's not easy getting behind the mic and, uh, and almost telling your story and speaking your truth. But I love how, um, what we do here um, with, with the platform, you know, people are listening, people are listening to these stories because we all got a story to tell. Um, and we need to tell our stories because when we tell our story, um, it, it, it can change someone's uh, perspective on things. It can give someone um, almost a, a helping hand, to uh, uh, almost a guiding hand to, to, to head in a certain direction. Um, and it can almost change someone's life and, and save someone's life. So so I'm glad we're here, you know, and, and there's, an, there's an element of vulnerability when we, when we start leaning into our past. Um, so obviously... Let's let's start just talking about firstly what is Tom Addison House, what is um, Bridge House, and how are they closely connected? And I know Matt, you do some work, you know, alongside the the, the establishments do, here yeah. in Liverpool. So we'll just start with yourself, Matt. Welcome back. Thank um, you. Nice to have you here. Good and to be here. Obviously, Matt's a psychotherapist, so you know we're, 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 we've we've got a professional in the field here um, who's who's also going to be um, just very much bringing his. Um, you know his education and, and and his gifts around what he knows about the mind and addiction and and the things he's seen in the field. Mm -hmm. So Matt, what's happening? Yeah, all good. Really, <laughs> really good to be here. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean maybe I can sort of start by telling you a little bit about Tom Harrison House and yeah. Bridge House, and then kind of letting the guys maybe fill in and and sharing some of their experience. Um, so Tom Harrison House is a, a veteran specific. Uh, treatment center for those struggling with drug and alcohol addiction. It offers a really kind of unique 12 week program um, for men and women who have served or are currently serving in the armed forces. Mm. Um, I say it's unique because it's the only military based treatment center in the UK currently. 
uh, and the bridge house is a supported housing project. So that's an abstinence base. So that means that residents there uh, have to abstain from drinking and using and they can stay for a period of time to kind of integrate their own recovery mm. before taking the step into uh, independent living. Nice. So I, I kind of work uh, alongside both projects offering um, one-to-one and group psychotherapy. Nice. Um, and so Tony here, you are a big part of Bridge. You're a support worker. Yeah. Um, how long then have you been there and, and where did that all almost start for you, Tony? Um, I've been at Bridge for about two and a half years, I think. Um, but I've been in support work a lot longer than that. Um, about eight years, maybe more. Um, I, I applied for Bridge um, because it, it had a good name and I'd heard that there might have been a job going. So I was working on the building with my brother at the time mm -hmm. because I was working in, um, in another support accommodation, but my half fella passed away and I felt I needed time to come away from that kind of support work to sort myself out mm. because, you know, he died of cancer and, you know, I just wanted to sort my own head out around yeah. that. And then when I was ready after a couple of years to come back, I applied to go to Bridge, um, got, a, got an interview and obviously got the job mm -hmm. um, as, as a support worker there. Mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's a great job. I love I love doing the job. I love helping people. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, as Matt said, it's about helping people become independent yeah. um, and get the life back on track. Yeah. We can do things like from anything from like, because Thomas Allison House is like a, um, a rehab, like for veterans, well, bridge, they cross over. Some of them come over and stay with us. Um, yeah. But we also have people who are not veterans yeah. who come in, maybe off, off, off the, the streets. streets, off the hostels, from yeah. detoxes, from family places, yeah. from other rehabs. Yeah. Um, but if they, if they come from a detox or something, we might, refer them to, to like a daytime treatment centre somewhere where they can go or do other kinds of work with refer them to Matt. Just support them in what what their needs are. Everyone's individual. So it's, yeah. I can't say this is a package what I'll give you. We'll work with individual needs and support yeah. them needs. Yeah. You know, it could be, you know, getting back in touch with the family yeah. or building them family ties back up. Um, and it's how, it's how you build on that and how you introduce that to them and, yeah. you know, working at their pace. Yeah. Yeah, so and that's support where we, you know what what inspired that so where did that start coming from because obviously you know <coughs> leaning back into your past and where was it that you actually wanted to support other people on this journey um i don't know I, I, like my own journey started off um through my own drug addiction mm. my own alcohol addiction um and that just led me to destroying everything in my life mm. my drug and alcohol addiction it just like you know i, I was a young dad you know, i didn't grow up I just, I just just started getting into the party scene and stuff yeah. like that. Um, you know, and, and before I knew it, you know, I was, I was in and out of prison. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just that's through my addiction, through ways of, of earning money to yeah. to get to get money for drugs, for, for alcohol. Um, and just, just destroying everything around me. Um, and I, I, got, I wanted to get into support work. I remember, I, like, I didn't want to come into recovery. I weren't up for recovery. Um, I, I would come into recovery was... I was doing a sentence, three year and a half month sentence I was doing. And um, I'd done three years, I think, out of that sentence. And I should have been out in half of that. And what happened was uh, my probation officer come up and he said, um, a lot of your crimes are related to drug and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, yeah, 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 sound. And he said, I want you to go into the app, you know, and, you know, to get out and stuff like that. And I was like, nah, nah, I'm not into that. And um, so <clears throat> the drug worker in prison said, I was talking to him about it, and he said, you know what? He said, you'd be able to see your family in six weeks. I'm thinking six weeks, six months, you know? So that was me. I'll see my family in six it. weeks. Yeah. And that's why I decided to go to the house. I didn't go to the house yeah. to get well or... Yeah. Because I didn't have a clue. Mm. <clears throat> but when I went there, um, and then they sent me to AA and stuff like that, and I realised that, like, there was... There was um, there was a life on offer for me. Yeah. You know, I've been existing. Yeah. You know, using drugs, going to prison, mm. family not talking to me, not seeing my children, yeah. breaking up with my partner. Mm. You know, all the stuff that that, that comes with it. Um, and, and I realised, you know, um, <clears throat> I, I'm better than this. Yeah. But going back when I was in prison, I remember coming out, out my cell and looking around and thinking, I can't do this no more. Mm. But it weren't about what was around me. 
and the prison because I've, I've done prison for years mm. and, and, and I've adapted to it. So I was able mm. to adapt and just get on with what was going on. Yeah. It was internal. Mm. I couldn't do it no more internally. Yeah. But I didn't know the way out. It was almost a light bulb moment. Yeah. So, and then the probation officer co comes up and says that. And then, you know, the car character worker, as he was called then, the drug worker's got me into this rehab. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, from there. So I think everything's connected. Like a chain of events. Yeah, it, yeah. it's connected. Yeah. Um, I, I remember just, just I was I was in rehab with this lad and um, fucking crazy, this this is proper spiritual stuff, this. And, and like, his dad was was a prison officer in all course. And I, but I didn't know. But I, I I was around the bend, running from wing to wing, getting drugs, getting things, you know. Yeah. Doing whatever. And, um, I was on this thing called basic where you get fuck all phone credit only on you can only buy phone credit you can't buy anything else yeah so um i just out of, out of the cheek of where my head was at the time they opened this new wing painting and decorating wing and woodwork and all that and i thought i'll apply to go on that my behavior was horrendous by the way <laughs> and um, he, he just come back and he said to me are you having a laugh he said that's for enhanced prisoners only you know yeah. people who behave themselves and um he come back a few days later, and he said to me, I've been thinking about you, and he said, I'm willing to give you a chance. Mm. And this is where it all started to change for me, I think. Yeah. Like, giving that chance someone off someone. Someone in you. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so I go, I, I get on the um, painting and decorating. Um, I don't think they trusted me in the Woods Workshop. <laughs> <laughs> so they just put me on the painting and decorating, um, paintbrush and stuff and that, you know. And I become a mentor on there. Mm. Um, so I was nearly, nearly shipped out of there because mm. of my behaviour. And then I become a mentor on the painting and decorating course. Um, and then that's when I ended up going to the ab. Yeah. And then I met this amazing man, Gary. He's dead now. He's out of addiction. And um, and that was his dad. Wow. You know, so his son was suffering addiction. Yeah. And he's seen that in me. Yeah. And gave oh. me a little bunk up. Yeah. And that's where, like, my journey sort of started. Yeah, there was compassion from him yeah. in them moments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes we just, we almost... We're starving to be seen, aren't we? Almost, you know, that our self worth can be so um, non existent that mm. it, it, it sometimes just takes someone to say, I believe in you. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And, you know, almost mm. like a little bit of a blessing as such. And I'll give you, I'm going to give you the chance. But I suppose, you know, when we are heavily in addiction, we, you know, there's, there's, there's many times, I suppose, where you blow that chance, you know what I mean? Or yeah. you deny rehab. Mm. You know, you, you, a lot of people probably just think it's, um, you know, it's not for them, or, they, or they're, they're, they're actually denying their addiction, I suppose. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I suppose a lot, of, a lot of people don't actually feel like they're addicted, Matt. Mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, as that, as you know, where does that fit into that? Yeah, I, I think obviously that depends on the individual. Um, you know, we within addiction, we kind of talk about the rock bottom. Mm. So, when um, typically in an addict's kind of journey and they're in their path, they kind of reach this, this dark night of the soul mm. you know where where their life is just at such such a rock bottom that they have to rise they have to kind of mm. find themselves have some sort of hopefully spiritual awakening and yeah. and, and have that light bulb moment like tony described mm. where it's like you know I, I, now is the time to kind of get well and you know as tony said about being seen and noticed and and as you mentioned believed in or blessed you know, like sometimes it takes someone else, doesn't it, to be able to say, mm. like, I really see you. I really yeah. believe in you. Yeah. Because in that time, I'm sure you didn't you didn't believe it for yourself. Or No, when I got that chance to go on that wing, I was getting, for me, I was getting on that on that wing just to get away from the rat race, mm. and, and, you know, and, and give myself a chance. And when, when I weren't, weren't using um, or making any kind of reach, I, I was like, you know, I thought I was fixed. I thought I was, you know, I thought the drugs are down, the alcohol's down. I yeah. didn't need nothing else. Now, I didn't know anything about addiction or I just thought they're down and that's it, it's over. Yeah. But I had that, like, spiritual awakening on that wing when when I walked out that door and I just couldn't, I, I knew I couldn't do it anymore. And it weren't yeah. about me surrounding all during the prison because I'd done that for years. Yeah. I'd adapted to it. It was about what was going on inside yeah. for me. So I, I started, like, you know, well, I, first I went to see the Buddhist fella, but... It, it went, you know, I, I didn't understand it. You know, he's sitting there, he's meditating. I was probably scared. And yeah, I'm yeah. thinking, he's just a kip him. I can't be coming back again. <laughs> but I didn't understand, you know what I mean? I'm in this room 
there's me and this Buddhist fella and some other fella, and he's like, and Josh Dixon, and I'm thinking, wow, what am I doing here? My head's all over the place. And yeah. Then, you know, I end up going to church anyway. I, I spoke, spoke to the, the Muslim fella and all that, because I knew something inside was, yeah. it was spiritual. It was driving you, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, I didn't understand what it was. Yeah. I was just left with me once the drugs and the alcohol had done. I'm left with me and I didn't yeah. know how to deal with that. Yeah. You know, just sort of like my head just going racing and stuff like that. And then, you know, I ended up going to church anyway and stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah. And that sort of, sort of helped me deal with, with a lot yeah. of stuff. And then, then you know, obviously, where was that process then? What, what was your container? You know, you come out, you, you know, you, you were out of jail. And then where, where did you naturally lean towards? Had you done the 12-step program by then or did you start going to AA meetings or? No, I was, as I say, I was, I was in rehab. Yeah. And you'd done your first one to five steps. Right. You didn't do no more. But in that meantime, you'd have to go to a 12-step fellowship meeting every night. Yeah. Um, and I was going to, going to AA. Um, so I was doing seven a week. Yeah. And then when I got out, I got, you know, someone to take me through the steps, what we call a sponsor. Yeah. And then, so I've done... I done that, um, yeah. and and I stay, I stayed in AA because that's I know that's where you know once if I if I leave that fellowship for me, yeah, you know, I'm leaving something special behind. Of I'm just left with me, and it, it's given me the life that I've, that yeah. I've got today. Because it's a I've community put, as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I've had to put some hard work, and I'm not saying no one's just giving me it on a plate. No, you won't be giving it on a plate. Yeah. You have to put the hard work. There's in. an there's an inner will, isn't there? You know what I mean. You've got yeah. to show up, haven't you? Yeah, you've got to show up. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I've learned a lot about myself. There's loads, like, you know, I don't know, I've just learned loads, you know. I'm very, like, you know, if I set out to do something, I'll achieve it. As yeah. like, all my life I've been an underachiever. Yeah. I've never had that, like, self-confidence to do anything, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, and I believe in myself today and yeah. all, all that kind of stuff. You know, I've got loads of self-worth and, mm. you know, I've done things that I would never imagine of doing. And you keep do continuing you know? to lean into these things, don't you know what I mean? Like, put, go into your edge. You know, I know you've done the meditation, which we'll lean into in a bit. Um, so how long have, 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 I suppose, have you been clean? 14 years. Wow. Yes, 14 years, yeah. 14 years in July it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been, it's, been a, it's been a journey. I've had the ups and downs. Yeah. Um, but I haven't picked up and I haven't had to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which, which, which is a miracle, really. Yeah. You know, um, I'd normally have a think on the opening of a letter. Yeah. You know, you know anything. Just, <laughs> yeah. well, just It doesn't matter yeah. what it is. Yeah. Just, just pick that thing yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't need an excuse. Don't need a reason. Yeah. But you know, today my, my life's just totally different, yeah. and I don't need to drink. Yeah. You know. I think when we've also got a sense of something which is purposeful to us, um, you know, when you're driven towards a purpose, it can, it can definitely take the edge off, can't it? Of maybe you know reaching for reaching for the booze or reaching mm. for the you know for, for the other substances. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's an element, I suppose, of like personal will, um, self worth, but also purpose. You know, and then having a support structure like you know Tom Madison House, yeah. like Bridge, so it's a it's an eclectic mix of things, isn't it? Which almost can keep you like you know on the straight and narrow, I suppose. You know what yeah. I mean, and, and get you to be um, get you to shine. You know, so you can offer your mm-hmm. gifts of a now of service of, of support to other people. Um, so let's bring Ian into this conversation. Ian, how are we? Oh, yeah, I'll it's good you to on. have you, Mochet. Sure. Thanks for being Sorry. here. Uh, you know, just listening to Tony's story there, how, how are you feeling? You know, what's what's what are you, what's lighting you up? Even just listening to um because I know you know Tony well, and I know you know Tony's yeah. story as well. You, you know, you're good friends, and what what's coming up for you there? Just just listening to uh, what Tony's been talking. Where about. he was saying, I'm out. Yeah, going from the like a young parent. Do you know what I mean? It was a similar journey for me off a little council estate and I went from a teenager on drugs to uh, an adult on drugs and to a parent on drugs within like four years, mm. do you know what I mean? Um, and everyone was doing it around, around. Yeah. We, like all my mates were all having a little go and things like that. Yeah. Um, and you know and when then, you say drugs, what does that mean to you? At first, it was mean? just like, it was weed at first. Yeah. So then it, the weed progressed into like slips, then it was speed. Yeah. And then my master come along and that was cocaine. Yeah. That was like, that was wow. Yeah. Do you know, at first, at the, and I always remember the first ever line I had and it was like, my mate had give it to me and I said, what are you doing having that, lad? Yeah. Sort of like I sort of fell asleep on it. It was either shite yeah. or I was tired, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> and then a few, like, he was getting married a few weeks later and our girlfriends were pregnant at the time. He already had a little girl. And I remember his stag too. It was just me and him in his living room with a copious amount of cocaine. Mm. And pff, 
had arrived. I was like, uh, Tony Montana. Russell Crowe in the yeah. Gladiator. Oh, yeah. Here I yeah, am here. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Yeah. I'm here. I've arrived. I've arrived. I'm in the arena. Yeah. yeah. And, Are you not entertained? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, and, yeah, and that's, like that, and then though. in the end, it took me to hiding in cupboards naked with knives and <laughs> shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah. it was good at first and then it yeah. progressed. I sort of like, my first line was at like 20. And my last line, I was 39. Wow, so it was 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was heavy. A like, massive journey then, you know. Massive journey, yeah. You know, with with cocaine. Yeah. You know, um, almost it's a relationship, isn't it? It's yeah. marriage, isn't it? You yeah. know. Um, and I know you were a cab driver as well, and, and you, mm. I know you're still driving cabs nowadays yeah. in, in Liverpool. A claim on this side. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so, you know, what did that look like? You know, because obviously... Oh, that was like, again... You know, the, the 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 taxi was my partner in crime. Yeah. You know, um, you know what I remember when 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 cocaine first came around. You know, people didn't know what it was. It didn't come with a government health warning. Mm -hmm. You'd only seen it in like Scarface and Al yeah. Pacino and things like that. And um, I remember going out with a load of taxi drivers, and I was involved. I got I, I, I sort of like got involved in it by distributing it around for drug dealers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? All them yeah. years ago when I was, I was you and it was like, it was, it was I mean like it was, uh, it was big time. Yeah, coming thick and fast. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, in clubs, I'd, I'd give it to normal lads and they'd come walking out by the bouncers with straws hanging out the nose going, where's my line? Yeah, yeah. And the bouncers wouldn't, didn't know what it was. They just yeah. weren't asked. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or they, or they didn't know what it was. Mm. But, um, the taxi and then it was like, I'd have a line. I'd, so like, I'd have one on a, Tuesday night even with me mates we'd be doing something in the pubs and things like that I'd have a line and then I'd go to work yeah do you know what I mean and then I'd be on it and then on the Wednesday I'd say I'm not having it today and then I'd go to like Tony not Tony now but another lad and I'd, yeah. he'd say to me on the Wednesday do you want a line I'd have one and then I'd start again yeah and um, it progressed like that and then he ended up being involved in it uh, in criminality mm. uh, and in 1997 I was arrested down in um, Ipswich on a conspiracy to import 10 million pounds worth of drugs yeah. uh, and I was set up mm. basically uh, and I, I went to court uh, and the stress of the court uh, took a toll on me and I was you, and then I come out. I got a not guilty. Me two lads and two Dutch, and um, I, my my way to fix that was to just get on the on the on the Charlie. Yeah. Um, and I had that for the next ten years, mm -hmm. from nineteen ninety seven till two thousand and eight, uh, two thousand and eight, when they actually arrived in recovery. Mm -hmm. Um, I was snorting and driving that taxi down the city of Liverpool. Yeah. And I'm embarrassed. Yeah. But I now know I wasn't well. Yeah. I, I really wasn't well. I was like, I was I was just covered in addiction. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't stop. Yeah. I just couldn't stop. Um, all my friends were doing it. Um, I'd lost my partner. Mm. My kids, my house, my car. I ended up in psychiatric units. Mm. All because of this like wonderful drug. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Never, but, it almost like becomes your best mate, doesn't yeah, it? You yeah. know, That's almost it ne was. doesn't judge you, mm. never lets you down, you know, easy to access. Yeah. And 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 then it's so then where was the turning point? You know, what, what what where did it come to after I suppose all that, you know, that heartache and, and the turning point was what was it? It was like, you know, it's on something so it was like nine eleven. Yeah. 9 11, I got kicked out. My when the Twin Towers went down, I yeah. got kicked out my house that day. And yeah. that's when my world came tumbling down. Mm. And I ended up back in my marsh at like 33 years of age. And I've got everything. I've got a business. I've got three beautiful children, a wonderful partner, mm. um, and a job. Um, my health was good, but I was involved in criminality. Mm. And I was four years into a nervous breakdown. Mm. By the time I knew from the, the, the stress of the court case, I was four years into a nervous breakdown, 2001. Um, and I ended up blagging it again. And then I got put in a mental institution, got kicked out of there for using. Mm. Um, again, I cracked on for another five years. And then I just caught, as Tony said there before, I was done. 
Yeah. I was the son. You'd almost so, just stressed it yeah, out. Yeah, I was the son. Yeah, I was could, dying. Yeah. And I was existing. I wasn't living. Mm. I was existing. I, I had a brilliant job, but I couldn't put gas on. I couldn't put lechy on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Good job the kids had a good mum who wasn't into drugs. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, you know, at the time I just thought I was a cocaine. And the psychiatrist told me, you're going to die a cocaine addict if you don't stop taking cocaine. Mm. And I was like, well, I'll do a stop. Yeah. And we give you these anti-schizophrenic drugs. So I started snorting them. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Serious. <laughs> started snorting. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. Started snorting. It's yeah, funny. Yeah. It is because I had the cell tape stuck up my nose walking around the Aussie and that, you know what I mean? It was like, yeah. bent. it was it was crazy. Then yeah. I was like in a book, like Tony was saying about going to see the monks and I start. I think that was like sort of me, it was sort of like a spiritual awakening for me that as well because yeah. wherever they come from, I started thinking religious. Yeah. Now I'm not religious, I've never been religious in me. I went to, ch to church. Sunday school because I fancied the vicar's daughter when I was like yeah. seven or eight, you know what I mean? That's why I went to church. Um, and then when I've sort of like lost the plot as everyone, I thought I'd lost the plot. But I'm also grateful that I did lose it because I wouldn't have found this whole new world I'm living yeah, in now. But I started thinking um, religious things. I was saving the world for women and kids. Yeah. Everyone deserved a second chance. The Bible should be written sent and then me... My ex-partner was reading it and she's going, you've lost the fucking plot. Yeah. You've lost the plot. And she was reading everything. I was like, I've still got it all. It's all boxes of writing. Mm. Um, all the lads who was involved with, they were all shitting themselves. What yeah. the fuck's he doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then I ended up, and, and my friends, my friends had, uh, he'd gone to South Africa to, uh, to get well. We'd, he'd been in, the Prairie Clinic, and he'd gone to South Africa to do this stuff, this 12-step programme and get well. And he found, he come, and um, my partner said to me, he's outside, like Jeff's outside and he owned my life. Um, so when I goes outside, he was sitting there and he was all fresh-skinned, like every tea in the big book of AA yeah. it is, when he goes to 12-step builds over you. So this is like, I didn't know nothing about the 12 steps. And I see him and he says to me, I don't drink, I don't use no more and things like that. And he said, I've got, I started this thing called Cocaine Anonymous. And like, I went asked, I was still sick. I had yeah. the skin of a dying man. I had mm -hmm. piss all over my trainees, just yeah. skinny, like a skeleton. Um, and, but I had these three beautiful children and a, and a boss partner. Mm. And then it was another five years and he had an act of relapse and he, and he 12 stepped me on this act of relapse of his. Mm -hmm. um, and he threw me a big, big book of AA and he said, read that, the doctor's opinion and Bill's story. Mm. Um, and I just couldn't put the book down. I was like, fucking hell, that's, that's me, yeah. that's me. And little did I know, I started to get identification. I was getting identification mm. by reading this book. And then he threw me another one called Hope, Faith and Courage, part one and two. Um, and it was stories from CA, Cocaine Anonymous. Um, and, I, and I was taking hope. If they can do it, I was reading their yeah. stories. If mm -hmm. they can do it, I can do it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I done it. I, I remember on my hands and knees praying. And I was saying, I was crying in the Hilton Hotel in Manchester on my hands and knees. And we were doing it. I've never seen anyone do it. It was an act of relapse. And I was saying to him, please, lads, we're going to die. We're going to die. He'd been stopped for five years. I was trying to stop for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it was just scary. Yeah. And then he asked me to cut. And then I just said to him, I'm going to this place you told me about. And I ended up in a uh, Cocaine Anonymous meeting in 17 Rodney Street on a Saturday night on the 20th of July, July in 2008. Right. And as soon as I walked in, you know, I remember the worst thing I did in, in addiction was snort a gram of cocaine in front of my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I was sick, and uh, my dad was saying to me, blah, 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 and I, and I was saying to him, take me to Ashworth, they're waiting for me to come in, like, <laughs> like this booth. <laughs> and he's got me thinking, fucking hell, if I take you in there, they, they, they're just not going to let you out. Mm. Uh, anyway, I walked in this room in Rodney Street, and as soon as I walked in, I knew. Like Tony said before, I just knew mm -hmm. that group of people in there. That was it. That was it. That what was I it. heard them saying, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. And the first time I said it, it came <laughs> round and I said it, 
It's just like, it's just the relief yeah. that I finally admitted it. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I've been in denial you for so long. Truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all the truth. It's the yeah. truth that sets us free, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think we, the truth's fucking hard, isn't it, sometimes, mm. you know what I mean? You know, um, it's, it's really ugly sometimes, mm. the truth. And when we come to this place, we almost just hold our hands up. We tell the truth. We come out of that, that, that space of denial. And then you're almost, you're ready then, aren't you? There's almost like there's a clean slate, isn't it, that you're going to be working from. Um, thank you for sharing that so far. Like, you know, yeah. really captivating. That's me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, um, you know, for anyone listening to this, you know, who uh, who feels maybe they have got some sort of um, heavy addiction or maybe or, or you may have, you know, some... Um, I mean, it's a very subtle journey as well, Matt, isn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? It's not always like, uh, it can be really heavy where you're using every day. It can, yeah. you know, I'm, I suppose, you know, we can just lean into you for a minute. What's the difference maybe between having a couple of drinks and then being addicted to, to alcohol? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's less, line? I think it's less around, it's definitely for me anyway, not about the substance or, or the behavior or, or the, the tool that you use and more about the the story that lies underneath it. Mm. So uh, someone told me this analogy about an iceberg, which I really like to describe addiction, where the exposed part of the iceberg is the, is the drug of choice, is the drink, is the behavior, be it gambling, uh, porn addiction, sex mm. addiction, codependency yeah. within relationships. And everything else that's under the surface is the story that, that kind of creates the the need for the addict to use or to yeah. disconnect from themselves. Yeah. So yeah, for me it's more about the 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 individual story and, and the depth of that pain. Yeah. You know, so I, I think when we when we consider individuals, people's addiction, you know, we can have people who have stories like Ian's and Tony's, and then you can have someone who is addicted to work. You know, mm -hmm. like in a society like ours, where it's kind of like culturally respected when you're mm -hmm. successful and you've got the car and the yeah. house and the money. Mm -hmm. But what's driving that? Yeah. You know, like, are you being driven by fear or by pain? Yeah. Are you so driven into your job because of basically trying to run away or avoid feelings that sort of live within yeah. you? Yeah. Um. So I think it's, it, you know, it might even be a really great, time now for us to explore like what is addiction yeah. and what is it to to us yeah and how does it maybe play out in our life because i think one of the big big subjects and something i am so passionate about is how most people are confused about addiction and yeah. it has such shame and stigma attached to it mm. that people kind of get focused on well it's the drug you know, I tried the drug and I couldn't put it down or yeah. I, I couldn't stop partying or I was weak. Or, and they never, ever stop to see what's underneath that. Yeah, get under the skin. They don't mm. see the, the, the trauma that led to the person wishing to disconnect from themselves. Yeah. And, and somewhere along the line, there's a there's almost, a, 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 you know, certainly from what I feel is it, it's, it's, a, it's a gap, that's a hole that's missing, isn't it? And Almost, you know, we have an innate drive to love, don't we, and to be loved. And mm -hmm. it's almost like a, 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 a feeling of fear, uh, a feeling of, of scarcity, a feeling of, um, and that's why then we desire something because we feel like we've almost got to add something to our life that underneath there's, there's something which is unfulfilled or, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, as we, you know, grow from, from children, we do have these underlying unconscious wounds that very much play out in our day-to-day -day activities. And, they're so subtle we don't see them, and mm. then that's why we I suppose we do reach for whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, which, which almost um, fills the hole as such, fills the void. For sure, yeah, yeah, and it never does. Yeah, like it. it that's the thing. Like it no fills amount. It for a minute, doesn't it? And then it's, moment, yeah. it passes, and then it's yeah. even more painful, and then that yeah. that void becomes becomes even deeper. Yeah, and I think I think we're all subtly addicted to something. Yeah. You know, I think maybe that the depth of our addiction or, or, or our, our drug of choice is linked to the depth of our own trauma. Yeah. Or the, or the sensitivity of ourself as an individual. Mm. 
And and then whether as an individual we have a propensity to act in or act out. Yeah. So those of us that act in might utilize food or porn or something kind of quiet and, and yeah. secretive. And then yeah. those that are more likely to act out, you know, they're gonna drink, they're gonna yeah, they're gonna use. Um but yeah, I think it's so kind of key to really look at the individual and, and understand what's underneath. Yeah. Like what's the base of that iceberg? Because that's yeah. the bit that's really, really important. And that's the bit that insanely inspires you as a, as a psychotherapist. More than it? anything. You know, you've yeah. done some work with Dwayne O'Kane at the Clear Mind mm -hmm. Institute. Um, you know, and it's now a, a big part of how you hold space for other people. You know, it's it's really, you're not just being supported by the AA meetings and by the 12-step programme, but also maybe unpicking it a little bit or, and giving someone a container to yeah. really understand what's going on for them. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think, from. I think like the, the 12 steps and, and the fellowship is this amazing spiritual foundation to live your life by. Yeah. And then to be able to, when you've got some, some sober and clean time under your belt and you've got the, the resilience and the tools to then be able to see what's underneath it all. Yeah. And to really mm -hmm. start to, integrate your trauma and kind of work with that that's that to me is the the panacea of mm. of good recovery and you know you, you know you, you talk, um, i know you're you're heavy into you know into the breath work and into embodiment and into yeah. you know not just you know releasing shame but not just through you know you know we release shame by talking about shame you know but it's not just at the level of our voices it? it's the level of our using the breath it's cathartic isn't it it's getting yeah. into the body um you know, and, 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 and there's many different modalities that, that people can start to explore. Yeah. You know, to um to very much just get to the root. You know? Yeah, because I think like with, with all of the addictions, essentially it, it's the same goal, isn't it? It's like I, I need to disconnect from here. Yeah. So my addiction essentially builds a brick wall from the chin down. Yeah. And it's my way of not feeling whatever is present for me, mm. of not kind of um embodying this trauma that wants to be held and wants to be felt yeah and so yeah i i, I help uh men and women reconnect with their physicality through breath and through movement to be able to essentially kind of break that wall down yeah. and then support them to be able to feel comfortable in their own skin and, yeah. and to finally kind of process so much of the unresolved issues that yeah. they've been dealing with. And there just comes a level of safety then in your own experience, doesn't it? And then yeah. what comes with that is almost a natural domino effect of of, of self-worth, natural confidence, you know, leadership, yeah. um, you know, and, and a, a willingness to, to, to actually want to do something in the world rather than almost dehydrating the world, you know, and, and, and projecting, you know, your, um, you know, your, your way of being, your limitations. But now you know, coming to this place, doing all this healing, and then actually wanting to, you know, hydrate the world, wanting to save, you yeah. know. Um, talking about safety then, Tony, there, you know, you know, obviously, you know, coming into the body, you know, what, what Matt's talking about, how, how can you relate to that? Um, what, what do you mean? It's like, Well, yeah, how... you, you know, obviously, you know, with all these addictions that Matt's mm. just been, you know, saying, and it shuts the body down, doesn't it? So obviously now you've been clean for 14 years, you know, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, how you're now holding space, you, you, you're you probably just feeling life again, aren't you? You know, you can yeah, feel I mean, the world, you're in love, I suppose. Yeah, mm. so, so, yeah, definitely in love with life, like it's totally different way of living. But I think with, with Matt, what Matt just said about like when, when, when you're using drugs and alcohol, you're acting out and, and then with other addictions, you can be acting in. Yeah. And I think that's played out over the years in certain areas, like Matt, I've, with food for me, yeah. When I get a muscle, I, 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 I smash the food. You know yeah. what I mean. Um, and when when I first come into to fellowship, I went I went up to like twenty stone. Mm. You know, um, just emotional eating. Yeah. You know, I weren't dealing with. You know, as Matt just said, you know, I dealt with what I needed to deal with, but I still had loads of stuff underneath to yeah to sort of deal with, and I hadn't I hadn't dealt with. Yeah. I believe I, I'm I'm still dealing with loads of stuff, and I can still act out in. Yeah. in other areas mm, of course. and course you know and i think that that'll be ongoing and yeah it's, but i feel you know i feel great in, in myself um, i don't think i've i've been in a better place than where i am yeah. at this moment today um 
since I've been in recovery. Because um, there's not just AA meetings, is there? There's CA meetings, there's like, um, there's all kinds of meetings now. There's like, loads of different yeah. Jaffa Cakes Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Harry Inch is fit me up from. <laughs> JA. <You know? laughs> Jaffa Cakes Anonymous. Yeah, and also, I believe, you know, it's just listening to Matt there and it made loads of sense in, in, in loads of areas mm. that like, where he act out and you know and even, even exercise I can over exercise yeah. mm. you know, I, I remember speaking to Matt one time about about running and I was just like running loads of pain away mm. um, was running every day um, ended up you know doing a, a 50 mile ultra marathon just mm. just having loads of pain to deal with yeah um, a lot around me, me, me dad's death and stuff like that I was just running running through injuries taking painkillers to run and you know just that obsessive mind, I need yeah. to run, I need to run to feel all right. I need yeah. to, you know, and so in other areas, it, it plays out and then yeah. you get injured and then you're out for, for, for a while, you know, yeah. and then, um, you know, so yeah, just, it, it can, can act out. If, it, if I'm not on top of it, I can act out in loads of areas yeah. in life. I think Tony yeah, Robbins think. talks about addiction. It might be not be him, but, you know, or I've, had, I've heard the quotes, you know, he's talk, a lot of addicted to something, just use your addictions wisely or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think there are layers to it, aren't there, Toe? Yeah. Of like, you know, initially your your focus is survival, isn't it? It's yeah. like life or death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got to put this down, otherwise I'm going to die. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, it, the other kind of addictions, the other more socially acceptable addictions start to surface, don't they? So yeah. go outside most NA or AA meetings in the world and most people are smoking outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most people have got an energy drink in their hand or they're eating biscuits and yeah, drinking sugar. coffee. And yeah. there's Caffeine. there's yeah. and there's often codependency and, and sex addiction and relation, you know, love addiction that's kind of prevalent within. And it's kind of like the the stages of addiction and the stages of healing mm. but the primary one is i've got to survive i've got to i've got to put the drugs down i've got to put the drink down mm. and then i think as you move forwards into you know and as your your foundation strengthens you're then kind of able aren't you to step into and look at those things look at what's my relationship like yeah. to food to sex yeah. Yeah. to to relationship yeah, you know, like mm. where do I give myself? Where am I losing myself outside of yeah. my primary addiction? It's a daily almost. It, it, it takes self awareness, doesn't it? To mm. you know, to look at these things daily. But I suppose now, you know, I get a sense that you're not a victim to the addictions anymore. You know, the drugs, but you're more now empowered. You feel, you know, where you can you naturally take a look at this stuff. You're not the victim anymore. You're mastering your life a lot more. Yeah, I'm. I'm dealing with things more. In, in, in more. I mean, like it took me like 14 years to deal with my addiction to food. Yeah. And I'm only just realising that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Um, it's like me like, practicing self. Yeah, I brought loads of chocolate. <laughs> <but chocky, laughs> yeah. You, you can see yourself now and again. I think. But, uh, <laughs> See it myself would be eating them two with a cup of tea, um, you know, and three sugars. But no, I, I think now for, for, for with me with the food, I'm only just starting to, to realise it. I just <clears throat> Matt and um, Paula um, got me this book, um, Recovery Two Point Note. I, I just I'm only at the start of it, but it's really at home about mm. me, me food addiction and stuff like yeah. that. But I, I think the book just. I've known that for years. Obviously, yeah. I went to 20 stones, you know what I mean? Got diabetes yeah. type 2, still didn't stop eating crap. Yeah. It's like, oh, I've got diabetes type 2, let's go and get a kebab, just wallow in that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just, <clears throat> and that's why I've got it, because I was eating stuff like that. And then I started training and stuff like that, but my food intake went. And then I went to, like, um, like a slim as well group. And, but still, it didn't deal with what... What was going on? What was going on, or yeah. my emotional side? It just, you know, my portion size and all that. And it's, and I think over the last, you know, I'd say the last month or so, I'm I'm dealing with. I'm, not, I'm I wouldn't say that I'm eating dead healthy. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I'm aware, and and I'm starting to do little things about it. Yeah. You know what I mean, did I, did I mention I've been three days pescatarian before? <laughs> <or> no? <laughs> you definitely did. Anymore, <laughs> no, but seriously, that's just like <laughs> little steps while I'm making. Yeah. I'm trying to just. Yeah. What just like, but, but I'll use my program on that, of course. Mm. And that's like, and that's know, the 12 step program, yeah, is it? Yeah, that's my 12 step program. So let's just like one day at a time lean into that. Then, you know, what does the 12 step program look like? You know, I mean, when did you, when, when did you come across it and, and, and how do you, you know, how do you use it every single day? Well, it's, it's how I use it every day is, you know, um, it's the word and it, it, like how I, I have to be honest with myself. Mm. 
and I have to be open, open-minded. To be honest with other people, yeah. I have to be willing to change, and yeah. that's and these that's are parts. How, of, these are the some of the steps, are they? Well, that's just like you know, honestly, open-minded and willingness. Really. Yeah, yeah. I have to, I have to practice that yeah. every single day with myself, with other people. Yeah, you know, I, I have to do that, and I, I have that actually on, on the wall in my room. Yeah. Actually, the, the letters how. Mm. So you know, when I wake up, I, I know that I have to be on it because you know, like honestly open-minded and willingness. I was the opposite. I was dishonest. Yeah. You know, I was closed-minded. I, I weren't willing to do anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I have to practice these yeah. principles. Yeah. You know, and I, I understand just talking to Ian before about, you know, it's, you know, one of the steps is, you know, being powerless around people, places, things, mm. all that stuff. So, you know, I, I, I know that, it, like, the way my addiction plays out in food, I know, like, if, if I'm sitting in my house, the only reason I'm catered there is because this room's full. Let's have it right. If I'm sitting in my house and yeah. I've got a cup of tea and they're, they're, they're gone, yeah. there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know that. So what I've stopped doing now is buying stuff like that. Yeah. So if I was to go and buy a cake, I don't buy four. I'll buy one cake. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, but I know that. But when, I, when, when, when I'm in my stuff and I'm, I'm emotional, and my head will tell me, just buy the four. Yeah, go on. Your ma lives next door, just pop the other yeah, three in on. there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'll just go out and I'll buy the four, I'll take them home and I'll yeah. eat them. Do you know what? But, but I know yeah. I'm powerless over over. What's once. the promise, Toe? You know, like, what's what's the promise? What's that addict's part of your brain telling you the promises with those four egg custards? That, like, what, like, if you have them, then what? That'll just feel all right, I think. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll just, it'll change the way I feel, won't it? Mm-hmm. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to change how I feel. If I'm emotional about something and I overeat, I'm feeling stuffed. Yeah. And like, you know, so I'm not feeling the way I was feeling before. Yeah. You know, so I'm taking away what I feel. So mm. what my head's telling me is that that's gonna maybe not at the forefront of my head or subconsciously, maybe it's telling me. Mm-hmm. That, you know, that's going to fix me. And that's where that little voice comes in, doesn't it? You know what I mean? The little voice, you know, comes in and goes, go on, you, you deserve that. You've yeah. been in the gym today or, you know, mm-hmm. you, you've worked hard today. Go and have a pint. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Or it's been a tough week. You need the blowout. You know what I mean? And there's that little voice in the head mm-hmm. that almost dresses it. You know, it, it invites you, doesn't it? To mm-hmm. go, go on, reach mm-hmm. for it. Go on, have that. Mine will tell me. Of course, yeah. It's like where I am, I'm the same again. It's like I put drinking drugs down. And I pick food up, knife and fork, and st- and cakes and sweets. And like I know for a fact, as you, you know, you're surrounded when I'm driving into town overnight. The garages are lit up, and you get to the till, and then there's four bars of cho- chocolate for a quid, or one for seventy nine pence. I'm yeah. an addict. Yeah, I'm gonna get the four bars for yeah. a quid. I'm getting a bargain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not that your dad tells you yeah. that you, you know you're saving money. Yeah, do you know That's, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Even though you're buying two packs. Yeah. 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 You know, and you're then, going but, for one bite. By the time I get to the, I come out of the garage, I've got one. Get to the, on Scotty to go into the tunnel, I've got another one in my grid. Get by the Mersey tunnel and the other ones, and I'm going to give that last bar of chocolate to the first taxi driver yeah, yeah. to see on it. And then when I get there, I go, no, nah, they're not getting it. That's bad. <laughs> over the lot. Yeah. And it's like, I yeah. put it down to greed, but it does the same damage to me. It's doing the same damage to me in my head because yeah. it's like, I don't mean to do it. Yeah. It's like I'm practicing self-discipline over that cake there. Mm. As Tony said there, if that was in my house, it's gone. It's gone. But I don't buy them no more, I swear. I'm safer yeah. Yeah. walking down the Ale Isle and Tesco and Asda than I am walking down a cake aisle. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll swerve the cake aisle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know we're talking about addiction in generally, but you naturally become less destructive eating sugar swing. than what you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're naturally less destructive, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, eating sugar. Mm-hmm. Than what you are if you you know you, you snorting cocaine or yeah. you, you know. But mine's causing so like I've gone for an optician's appointment and mine's causing me the same that it's causing like I'm going blind in one eye mm. and it's down to sugar it's a it's a it's a thing to cause the sugar but I can't yeah I can't and and stop. even sort of you know talking about that about the relationship with food and and how easy it is you know like we were rewarded with food food is soothing and yeah. comforting yeah. yeah and from a really sort of simple perspective imagine the action of eating as with smoking and drinking yeah, we're yeah. kind of like we're pushing something down yeah you know when tony described that sense of feeling full yeah when when you feel bloated and full you're not able to access the feelings that are alive in you and want to come to the surface mm-hmm. and want to be felt yeah so we're so kind of programmed to stuff, stuff experience there. something that feels uncomfortable and then yeah. want to run a million miles away from it yeah mm. and the easiest way that we know to do that is to shove some it's food into it yeah is to is to disconnect from it and all it wants is 
it, it wants to be held mm. and felt and breathed into. Mm. It, like it, it wants to, like it, like a sort of, like a young child, it wants to be seen and known. Yeah. And we're just kind of going, no, you stay there. Yeah. Mm. No, get no, down. no, get down. And, and, and I think it's challenging, isn't it? When yeah. you, when you know, he, you know, cause you, you have a, a deep understanding of addiction and yet, you know that there's still some addictive person uh, behaviors that are alive within you. Yeah, yeah. It's like and, trainees and tops and yeah. go and fix myself with clothes. I don't mm. need them, mm. but I'll go and buy them. Do you know what I mean? I'll see them, I'll just go and buy them and, I'll, and it'll fix me for a day, mm. if yeah. that, an hour. Do you know what I mean? That's just fills all, a just hole, doesn't it? Just fills it all. That's all it does, is fill a hole. Yeah, so fill a mean? hole. Yeah, yeah. But you're almost using your addictions wisely yeah, now, yeah. you know what I mean? Wisely. Yeah, you know, you yeah. know, as Matt was saying, we're all subtly addicted to something. Yeah. Mm. But it's it's now you, you know there's a lot more self awareness around it. Mm. You're choosing it more wisely. Um, so you know if we're going to start then talking about like AA meetings, mm. you know, what does that look like in Liverpool? Like, and how many meetings? Like, is it? I mean, compared to when you went to your first meeting in Rodney Street mm. all them years ago to what it is now, like, how bad is it in Liverpool? It's there's a, like. There's an epidemic out there, isn't it? It's like when I see it in the taxi as well. So when I beat, so like I'm, I'm 13 years clean and I've worked on the taxi. So I've worked out there and and, and the, the amount of people that you see, ketamine, all the other drugs that they're taking yeah. now, and it's scary. Yeah, see, it's um, scary. Cats, and they're just cocaine, doing it blatantly in all front kinds, of you. Isn't it? Yeah, just blatantly doing it in front yeah. of you. But when I first walked in at the CA meetings, I knew like I was physically ex exhausted. I knew I was mentally exhausted, but I didn't realise I was spiritually unwell as well. Yeah, spiritually and, dead. Yeah. Ah, and when 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 the, I got a sponsor, and he and I, and I started going through the steps, going through the work, listening about how being powerless and there's a power greater than me, and mm. you know it's a battle of the wills. It's thy will or self will. Yeah. Well, self will got me nowhere. It got me to mental institutions. Yeah. Uh, so I was just and seeing people with like. The whites of their eyes and they were laughing and joking and things yeah. like that you know what i mean and you could hear that you you know you're not the only one to have put your family and yourself through that yeah do you know what i mean and you're yeah. still laughing and things like that in meetings and as matt said there it's a camaraderie do you know yeah. what i mean mm -hmm. they're there to help each other and guide each other and you know i did stop smoking i used to stand outside <laughs> With the ciggies, but in the end, they were. I thought to myself, I can yeah. stop drinking, I can stop drugs. Yeah. But I'm killing myself with ciggies now. Yeah. So I had to stop them. And, and, and it was a little saying that my mate said to me, we were going to Pride Clinic for a meeting one night. And uh, he said, Try this too shall pass. And I went, What? And he went, It's that simple. He said, Try this too. It's every time you want a ciggy, just yeah. say, This too shall pass. Yeah, it will pass. Yeah. And I've done it. And I, and I haven't had a ciggy for, since the 8th of October in 2008. Wow. That's how I stopped smoking. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the meetings, they've saved me, they've saved my life. Yeah. Mm. And a typical meeting, what would that look like? Like, is typical, it an hour, a couple of hours? An hour, and it's so, the, 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 most of them are like 90 minutes. Yeah. And so you walk in, you'll have, a, you'll have a, someone to greet you on the door. Yeah. This is your first meeting, if it's your first meeting, because. You'll see people full of fear and, you know, and then they lay that word, God. Yeah. And they go, whoa, yeah. there's a gang of Bible bashes yeah, in the room. Yeah, get me out. Where's yeah. the exit? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and all we are is like, you know, spiritual scallies. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, we've been there and, and done it. Uh, and was scared by the word God. And, and I use that now. Like, hey, I've got a God in my life today. Yeah. It's inside me. It's, I'm a, yeah. There's a spirit within. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I've learned through. Yeah. Through going through the work. But you'll have a, a, a room. It'll be chairs all around the room or in a circle. And you'll, you'll have someone to host a meeting. You'll have a few little readings said out. Um, and then you'll either get a book, someone to read a book, or someone to share their experience, strength of hope. Of, yeah what they were like growing up, as Matt's just been speaking there. Yeah. What's caused them? It's mostly fear. Yeah. It's mostly yeah. fear. That's one of the biggest ones that yeah. we use on is fear of when we were ch like childhood trauma and things like that, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's uh, things like that, but it's, the meetings are amazing. Powerful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I know certainly from my own work, when in, you know, I teach in dynamics of groups, do you know what I mean? Mm. You, know, you know, groups of 12, groups of 13, people sitting down in circles. So there's a symbology to it. There's yeah. a groundedness to it. 
And, you know, obviously I'm there to educate people and inspire people, but I also give a, a space, a platform for people to just, just share a little bit about, you know, why, why, why the year, you know, what are they looking to get out of it? Um, and then each week, you know, we go on a process because you guys have actually, you know, been into yeah. planet to do the meditation. You know, we go through a process where we just share our week, you know, how's the practice being for you. And, and I think, you know, what people are looking for is, is connection. You know what I mean? You know, to other people. Uh, resonance, you know, where, where people can just very much resonate. They're looking to meet new people, aren't they? They're looking to belong to something. Mm. So I think, you know, this... this um, Almost, I can just. I mean, I've never been to an AA meeting, but the, the, this sense of people coming together, isn't it? And then there's a, a collective support structure for them, people to to be held, to be seen, um, and to speak their truth, you know, and, and feel like not just the odd one out. You know, you you also talk about God there, and you know, you said my will and and thy will, and mm. obviously, you know, in the Bible, it's like, you know, um, know thyself, isn't it? You know what I mean? Mm. You know you. And within that 12 step program, I know there's a part where you're giving your personal self over to something Stop impersonal, with. you know, something yeah. which is beyond, you know, Ian, do you yeah. know what I mean? Beyond Ian's way of life, you know, beyond Ian's mental constructs, you know, the, the, you know, I mean, in religious terms, you know, it might be called God, mm. you know what I mean? But I mean, God was there before pre-religion anyway, mm -hmm. you know, and, and certainly from my perspective, you know, there's many terms to that word, you know, the universe or, mm. um, or you know, awareness, you know, or, or Krishna or Brahma, mm. you know, or the divine matrix, whatever. It's got many names to it, hasn't it? You know, mm. and I think when we almost start to surrender and, and start to have experiences, you know, which are godlike, you know, um, experiences you almost can't put your finger on, but you know mm. you know it's there as such, you know what I mean? Like we've heard that saying, you believe in God? No, but I believe in something because mm. I can feel it. So it becomes a felt sense, doesn't it? It becomes something that you feel. I mean, in religious terms, within Christianity, they'll say, oh, it's God's presence, mm. you know, and, and, and people tend to wait to maybe be in a church to feel God's presence or maybe be enchanted by a, a sunset or a sunrise to feel to feel something godly. Um but by the signs of it, you know, being in these meetings and and connecting to other like-minded souls and, and opening yourself up, inevitably what that is telling me as a meditation teacher is that you're just getting into the body, you're releasing your shame and you're feeling connected then. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that connection is almost the God force, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's something which almost you know you, has always been there, um, but you've just remembered it. You know, something that you know that is... Is, is resided is almost encoded into your experience somewhere and then it, there's like a revelation isn't it it's like ah, oh, I, I remember this feeling I sort of mm. felt this when I was a child maybe and I now remember this is who I am you know and, and that is um, them, they're powerful revelations aren't mm. they you know which can create a platform then to, to, to live a life of truth you know, I know you, Honestly, you yeah. I'd say, you know, yeah. I know you guys are being into, into the studio and just maybe gracefully lean into the meditation journey for a minute. How did the stuff that you learned in the meditation with myself, because I know you're doing meditation anyway, but mm. the stuff that you did with the meditation, how was that like coherent to, you know, the 12 steps or the AA meetings? It, it, it was like, it took it to another level for me. Took it to another level, like, and I'm full of gratitude for that as well. Mm. For uh, Tom Harrison to put me on the course, yeah, and to yourself and the people within the group as well. Um, it just blew me away, yeah. As you said, when Some you said people, to me, What it? was you doing for meditation? and I said, Little disc, pillow, <laughs> fall asleep, <laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, That's not meditation. I said, Fuck off, I've been meditating long for 13 years, really. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and that's what it was. It was like yeah. no way. <laughs> yeah. But um, I was just like it's, it's it was amazing. Because we um, intellectualized it a lot, yeah, didn't yeah, we? So yeah. we sort of amazing. unpicked what meditation really is yeah. and why we would want to practice meditation and then you know how to do it properly. And then mm -hmm. I think you know, talking about awareness, talking about our nature, and then mm -hmm. having a platform with the practice of meditation to nature that nature. Mm -hmm. You were, you know, it was just confirming and reaffirming mm. this experience which was godly mm. you know for you which has been met in the in in the 12 step program you know that mm. you know i know you call it the higher power yeah yeah the higher power and no doubt you you almost live your life from that space now ian don't you mm. 
Yeah, that's that's the, if well, like when I get up of a morning, the first thing I do is make me bed. Mm. Then I'll do my meditation, send me text out. Um, I'm ready to take part in life. Yeah, um, and you know, that's the way I I I, I love living that life. Mm. I love living that life. I love being like in control. I love knowing who I am. Yeah, and what's happening in the day, and I love making life. Making a difference in people's lives. Mm. Sometimes a little smile, a little hello, That's good right. morning. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And some people still get shocked when you say good morning and things. Yeah. Yeah. But it is the small things, isn't the it? You know what I mean? Things, you know, yeah. you're almost, you know, we don't have to be crazy pioneers to, to no. you know, you're working in the background, aren't you? Mm. You know, almost like, you know, the silence, your eyes, you know, and, it, and sometimes it just takes these small acts of kindness, mm. and, but you're also enthused by this godliness within mm. you, which is, you know, which is triggered of a morning time, but mm. it's triggered, you know, not not just from your own experience, but I get from a sense of appreciation and gratitude. It's like, well, I've woke up again. Mm. I'm healthy. I'm 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 clean, and I'm good to go. You That's know what I mean? That's what happens when it, when like, uh, I was offered the chance to work in Tom Harrison. Uh, it was through I, I met Paula in the lockdown last year. Thank God the pandemic. Mm. Now I embraced the pandemic because life was too fast for me. Mm. Before that, I hadn't stopped it for a good few years, yeah. um, running around in work and helping people in, in in recovery and things like that. And I bumped into Paula and she asked me like how many I could take in the taxi and the taxi was spotless and things like that. And it was locked down. So she said, would you move soldiers about for us going to Shiloh on a place where they go to? And I said, yeah. So I started doing things like that. Mm. Um, and then I didn't know Alison, where one of the girls worked there. And I was in uh, aftercare with Alison in Sharp in a treatment centre mm. with Alison. And uh, she put my name forward for a position in Tom Harrison. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I got the position. And the first two weeks I was waking up and I was like full of gratitude with tears in my eyes. And yeah. like, how have I ended up here? Yeah. How have I ended up here? And mm -hmm. it was like, and people were saying to me, no, you were meant to go into that work. That's and, right. And then when you see, like, it, like I did know about Tom Harrison because uh, one of our friends come to us years ago and asked us if dad needed help. He was a soldier. Uh, and I knew Tom Harrison and knew two lads who worked there. Yeah. And they told me to bring him down. And he we went down. It was in Broad Green at the time, mm -hmm. in Broad Green Road. And uh, we took this crazy alcoholic and took him down there. He was an, a, a soldier and he was stuck in West Belfast in his head and... It was our friend's dad, mm -hmm. um, and we took him in, and, and he said, yeah, and it was a little process, and the next minute he got himself, he, he got admitted to Tom Harrison, took in, and he got himself clean and clean sober with the intense work that they do. Yeah. Going back into that thing, the, und the underneath stuff. Yeah. What Matt was talking, that was a classic, what you said before, Matt, about I've never heard mm -hmm. that one, the iceberg, and all the stuff underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, and we put him in there on his 60th birthday. Wow. His 60th birthday, he went into Tom Harrison. And he did the 12 weeks? He's done the 12 weeks. Uh, he, he died uh, 18 months ago, I think, Tony. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he'd done it. And his daughter was forever grateful for THH as well. And then when I got the chance to work there, uh, seeing people come in, veterans and the broke, yeah. it reminds me of me. Yeah. When I was broke, when I had that skin of a dying man. Yeah. When I was like, I couldn't look at anyone in the eye. Mm. I was full of fear. I was petrified. Mm. I didn't know how to live in reality. Yeah, paranoid. Everything. Mm, yeah. So when they come in and they see me and I'm like, hello, lad. Here's a hug. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck and, yeah. and, and, and they're broke. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm like, I'm passing the 12 step. I'm, I'm saying to them, look, I was like you. Yeah, I've been here. I was like you. You've just got to, no matter how hard it is. Yeah. Or you think it is. There's not us. There's not them. It's not us and them. We're all one. Yeah. Everyone wants the same thing for you to get well. Yeah. Um, and you see miracles in there. Yeah. You know, I see, you see, I'm sitting one next to me, it's only using yeah. miracle, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet you both see miracles, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. you know, all the time yeah. now, you know, the, the, the stories, day. you probably, yeah. you know, you probably forgot most of those things that actually happen, you know, with, with mm -hmm. people's lives. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it, it's, I think just listening to you is, um, you know, it, just the level of 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 like of of drive that you have to actually serve others, you know what I mean? Using your own experience, though, it's almost like you've you, you've got to go through your own experience to now 
to, to, to see that man or to see that woman who, who were coming through that door broken. Mm. And then you're, and there's a relatability because you're like, I've been there. Mm. I've been there and we can help you. You mm. know what I mean? I think that's, um, for me, I think like one of my, my purposes in me being happy in life is to save other people. Yeah. yeah. I believe that. I mean, yeah. I believe that's, that's part of, you know, my journey in life, yeah. my spiritual side of me is to help another human being. Yeah. And that's what makes me, part of me my happiness yeah do you know what i mean um because I, I, I believe that we're all here to save yeah and um, to save each other to help yeah. each other, to help each other aren't we? yeah mm -hmm. definitely most definitely mm -hmm. and i think that's where, where where for me that's where the most growth is in mm -hmm. my life is when yeah. i when i when i reach out to another yeah individual and put my hand out yeah. and yeah. say you know i'm here yeah i'll help you best yeah. i can i think one of the and i can really relate to it like just witnessing someone's journey you know what I mean? Mm. You know, and you talk about like the skin of a dying man, but you see it in people's faces, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when they release some shame or, yeah. or you see them come in broken, <laughs> you know, on one day and then you see them leave and obviously, you know, come from Tom Addison, maybe lean into Bridge and they, they, they've, they've been through a process and they look, I'm guessing, look 20 years younger. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's like I said to someone the other day, um, the, they, they're being relapsing, coming back, relapsing, just full of anger, just full of pain, not doing no work around and mm. anything. And he started doing some work on himself. And um, I hadn't seen him for a couple of weeks, just keeping in touch with him in text. It had been a month, but I hadn't seen him. And I, and I seen him, he come to see me, and I looked at him, and it was like, I mean, he hadn't had Botox, but it was like he'd had Botox, his yeah. face was all released, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like all the pain was gone out of his yeah. face, his eyes were sparkling, yeah. and like his skin was clear, that all the lines had gone, like them anger lines, you know, yeah. they'd all gone, and he just, I said, wow, you look dead clean. Yeah. And he said, what do you mean? <laughs> and I didn't mean dirty <laughs> yeah. clean, I said, you just yeah, yeah. look clean. Yeah, yeah. Your face just looks yeah. like, you know, it's got it some light. life in it, do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that, you know, and that's that's the beauty of what you see, what you're talking about when you, mm. when you see someone come in, and then, you know, I, I remember hearing someone say, um, when I first come to AA, I knew everyone by the trainees because I couldn't lift my head yeah, up and look yeah. you in the eye. Yeah. Um, you know, and to see people come in with their head down, back over, hunched, mm. skin up, and then to like one day just be sitting there yeah. having a conversation with you, looking you in the eye. And yeah. just, it's, that's amazing that's to me. The one. Just that, that is the miracle. Yeah. You know, so so people saying it, I've got my life back. Yeah. But it's that mm -hmm. life force, isn't it? It's almost yeah. like that natural vitality, you know, where we they, they realise who they are again. Yeah. They realise that like they've incarnated for a reason. They realise that, you know, they, they, they're here to for some sort of purpose and and then the 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 you know, they shine then, don't they? You know what yeah. I mean? Is your purpose when you when you're drinking and you're using your purpose in my experience is you're getting up. You're thinking, drinking, ways and means of getting your money for yeah. your drinking, yeah. and, and then you're drinking, yeah. and you're repeating that. You're just manipulating so, life, yeah. aren't you? That's that's your to circle get, to get you, yeah. to suit the needs. You know what yeah. I mean? And if, if if like as Ian said before, you know you can just let yourself go. It, it's it's not important to brush your teeth. It's mm. not important to make your bed like Ian said. That's why little things like that for me, making my bed and going brushing my teeth, mm. the really important things to do. So it's yeah. two of the first things because you can let all that go because when you're fucking rattling for a bevy or, or something else, you you need to just get out. And, yeah. and get that bevy. Yeah. So, you know, when when you see people coming in, because you see people like that, I've seen people doing rattles through the rooms. And yeah. How they've done it, you know, mm. they, they just they just amazes me yeah. because they come in, they're not thinking, they're going home, and you know, and they're getting to two meetings a day, but that's only three hours and twenty four. Yeah. And they're getting through, and they keep coming back. So that spirit in the room is helping them. Yeah. Because it's it's not me. Yeah. I can send them as many texts and phone calls as I of want. Of course. Mm. So. Knowing that spirit in the room, they must carry that out with them. Yeah. As well. People it, who it, it, in really simple terms, it's just that reconnection to love, isn't it? Yeah. Like, okay. It's like <laughs> yeah, you no, know, yes, like it, it is, yeah. The, the agree, really yeah. the um like the warm hug of Means a drink a or of or or of a or of, of of smoking heroin or smoking weed, that the warm hug that that gives mm. kind of like you get that from the rooms. You they, they get it. They reconnect yeah. with yeah. their truth yeah. because yeah. maybe in their experience they didn't get that. Yeah, and and that they 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 yeah they reconnect with the beauty of human connection. Yeah, you know, like I was sort of sat here and and remembered, like when I was younger, I kind of grew up with a close family member who was really struggling uh, in active addiction, and when he 
engaged with the fellowship and engaged with the rooms, there was a part of me that was a bit jealous, actually, to be honest, because like he was part of this extended family mm -hmm. that was present any country he ever went to in the world. He yeah. could go and yeah. join a meeting. He mm -hmm. could identify. He could speak his truth. He could be vulnerable. Yeah. He could get hugs at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And there was a part of me that's like, well, there's nothing like, you know, until yeah. I sort of later found Gosh. men's work and the work that yeah. we do. Gosh. There's there's such, for me, beauty in, in recovery. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the whole ethos and oh, the gratitude and the love, it just... Talking about that love and that, that hug, like I've been to... To meetings in, in in different countries, not non English speaking, mm. do you know what I mean? And um, you can feel that that hug. Yeah. When you go in, you don't have to understand it's what universal, you're saying. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's exactly what you yeah. said. You can feel that hug. You're yeah. welcomed. You're loved. Yeah. It's there. Do you know what I mean? It's that spirit in the room. Yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't matter what language it's, it's coming out in. Mm. It's there. I had that you know in Disneyland I mean? exactly in the saying. middle of Disneyland when we went in 2009. I was about six months clean, and I've gone to Disney and. Met his Mickey Mouse. I was 36 years away. It's like Sam and Vision come to I'm in Disneyland and I had it. Um, I'm, I was dead proud of like coming alive this, this, the first six months of my life when I was coming back into it. I'm like, I had my kids around me, my sisters, my dad, and I'm in, in Disneyland with this t shirt on. I had with not a glum lot, CA and Serenity Keeper on the back. And um, I just heard, excuse me, sir. And I turned round and there was a lady standing there. She went, do you know of any meetings? Mm. And, I, and the next minute me and her were having a meeting in, in the middle of Disneyland. It wow. was a big hug. She was crying, I was crying. Wow. And it was like, that was a spiritual experience. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it at the time because I was only like so much into it. But at the, when I looked back on it, yeah. that was a spiritual experience yeah. that I was witnessing, witnessing. Which is a connection. A connection. connection. That's you know it is. You know, and, and, and we don't want to scare anyone, you know, because I know sometimes people can, can hear the word <coughs> God, can hear the word spiritual and, and, and almost, you know, run away from it or mm -hmm. turn off or tune out, you know. And I think, you know, what we're talking about here is just connection. You know, and yeah. what we're talking about here, it's just a human connection. You know, and I think, the, as Tony said before, there's a commonality that we're all here for one another. And, you know, when we can firstly maybe connect, I mean, it, whether you're just connecting with yourself and getting back into the body, or whether you are maybe connecting with other people, you know, both experiences are equally beautiful, you know. Yeah. And I think, um, uh, you know, if if we can, it's it's... It's just having the, uh, it's having the courage, isn't it? You know, mm. to almost want to connect. You know, mm. there's there's an element of some sort of will to, to want to connect again. You know what I mean? But 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 having the you know, almost a, a strong enough mindset to, to to do it without the without the drugs. Mm. You know what I mean? And to realise that the connection comes with other people. Mm. You know, and and I'm guessing you know these AA meetings or whatever meetings you know in Liverpool. Most people are welcome. You know, all, all people are welcome, I'm guessing, you know what I mean? The only requirement for membership, as they say, is the desire to stop using, drinking, and, and that's, it. that's it. Yeah. Just keep coming back. Yeah. And if you keep coming back, you will hear something in that room that will let you think, yeah. wow. Yeah, someone you know else's I mean? story. Someone else's story mm -hmm. and you go, F and it's that simple, it's unbelievable. That's what it is, yeah. You know that's I mean? the medicine yeah. right there, isn't it? And there's also uh, what they call open meetings as well for if anyone was struggling to go on their own when there was a family member who's maybe not an addict or an alcoholic yeah. to look for an open meeting that would welcome the family member to come yeah. in with the person who was maybe mm. struggling to yeah. come. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. there's just open. And I'm guessing there's meetings all day, every day. Yeah, there's, 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 there's a few meetings every yeah, day. Sure. Like, yeah. I remember when I there's first seven come nights a week, yeah. And if someone said to me, you know, lads, I can't understand why you can't just have a drink. And I went, because I don't go home when I have one. Do you know what I mean? I stay out for three days and things like that. And then he said to me, but you're getting addicted to them meetings. And I went, yeah, but lads, I went to see me drug dealer every single night for 10 years. Mm. So if it makes me, if I've got to go to a meeting seven nights a week, and it's it. I did, I did for like, um, I think say 90 meetings in 90 days. That's just a thing out of the big book. Yeah. Um, but I went to seven meetings in 36 days and then work took over again. But it's about me. So I've done that. I completed the steps. I'll take people through the work now as well in 12 yeah. steps. 
So and that's where you sponsor people. I'll sponsor being, people yeah. and things like that. Yeah. They'll come to me, will you? Say, and I'll take them through that because the books are American. It was written ninety years ago. Yeah. And so I'll take them through it in Scouts. Yeah, I'll you put your own flavour into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take them through it in Scouts and yeah. give them a little like look, awesome. look, that's that, that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. Do you know mm. what I mean? So like. You know, I still go to two, at least two meetings a week I do. Yeah. At least two. I'll do one after the year night tonight. I've got a little service position in an AA meeting in Knowsley Village. Yeah. In a church where a group of Valkyries get together. Yeah. And we enjoy an hour and a half of each other's company shared. Next, like someone will share their experience, strength and hope. Yeah. And then new people will come in and they'll get uh, literature and things like that to explain they'll start their journey then yeah they'll start it and, that, and that's it's just giving back yeah Passing i feel like on. it's more acceptable now where people are really leaning into these meetings more than ever like yeah when i when i first started going to <clears throat> going to the meetings um people that know that family members even um used to just like ridicule me yeah like, sort yeah. of like fucking god squad this god squad that blah yeah. blah blah and like that's 14 years ago and like you know, some family members have, have gone into fellowship now, but family members that are not in in recovery don't need to be in recovery. Mm. And friends speak so highly of it that the, the, yeah. the take of it now, the way they look at it, is yeah. totally different. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So it, the stigma has changed around it. Yeah, definitely. Lovely. Mm. Um, so and I think it's like it, it is definitely more accepted. Mm. It's it's more known yeah. as where I don't think many people knew much yeah. about it. Yeah, years ago. Yeah, and it was just ridiculed. Whether that was through people's fear or not, I don't, don't know, or not mm. wanting to see a change, or scared of the change that you was making in your life. I don't know. Mm. But um, yeah, you know, even my ma, she's uh, somewhere in her heart. Do you know what I mean? It's changed me. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So she's like, you're going to them things, and yeah, I'll go to, to one of them things tonight. Yeah. So she still asked that I was still going to them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because she knows before she, she knows the story before and after the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She's witnessed a lot. Do you know what yeah. I mean? She's witnessed she police kicking the door in at six in the morning looking for me and I'm somewhere snorting coke and she's getting mm. ragged out of bed by the fucking head. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's you know, she's had to go through all that. Mm. So she knows the story before and after. So she knows what it was like and she knows what, what's happened since I've been going here. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So mm. you know. Mm. Anything you want to add there, Mas? As a as a kind of final, just, yeah. Well, well, you know, I think we're you know we're, we're in for an, uh, nearly an hour and mm. twenty years, so we just thought I'd probably uh, lean into towards yeah, the uh, later stage of the conversation. I think, I think for me, it's just if anyone's listening to to for them to get or or, or maybe hopefully grasp a real understanding of what addiction is and if they're struggling it with it themselves to, to really know that there's no shame in it. Mm -hmm. Like addiction is about pain avoidance, the avoidance of deep pain. It isn't about being a smackhead or a pisshead or whatever, mm. yeah. like horrible language we're kind of culturally programmed to, to believe it to be, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, like I said, we can be subtly addicted to so many things. And so I think maybe it would just be a general invitation to be able to reach out to someone, reach out to someone like Tony and Ian, maybe yeah. someone like you or I, yeah. you know, and, and, and speak about that stuff. Understand that so many people are struggling. So many people mm -hmm. are, are checking out mm. and, um, and, and yeah, they're just not able to be present and enjoy yeah. all of the richness of life because they don't know how to feel yeah you know like that's essentially what it is yeah. they're scared of feelings i think and, nowadays obviously the, the big one is is people are addicted to the phone aren't they? yeah, addicted yeah. To absolutely it's the social media isn't it they're addicted to the phone which just yeah. puts you almost so far in the head you know what i mean and we we, we almost live a very cerebral life don't we you know mm. what i mean you know, we're up here a lot so you know, I mean, nature's our greatest teacher, isn't it? Really, yeah. you know, getting into nature, it's a beautiful mirror. Mm. It's it's a perfect mirror, really. Mm. Um, but getting into these support structures where, you know, you're just going along and you you're meeting people. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's another big thing. People are afraid to meet new people, aren't they? You know mm. what I mean? So I think if if you can sort of, you, the invitation is to get out your own way, isn't it? You know what I mean? If you just get out your own way, yeah. and 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 you know get get to a meeting or um 
you know, or, or there doesn't have to necessarily be meeting to somebody, it? speak to someone, to or even yeah. sometimes it's not even necessarily a meeting, is it? You know, it might be yeah. go, go, go and sign up at the gym, go, and, you know, go and get that that gym membership, go, go to the yoga class, go to the running club. You know what I mean? It's there's it's because inevitably it's about people, isn't it? Yeah, you know, mm. it's it's people, and and I know that it's not just these these meetings we've been talking about, but it's all these other clubs that if you can almost lean into something that that is is for you. Is giving you a sense of belonging, giving you a sense of, of, of a, a platform to to grow as a person and to transform. I think that's the medicine there, isn't it? That's that's where it's all happening. Um, yeah, and then I think also for me personally, just like acknowledge Tony and Ian. You yeah, know, like I, like to the 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 work that they do. Yeah. you know, on a daily basis, living at the sharp end of addiction. It's not. Yeah, it isn't for the faint-hearted. It's mm-hmm. like it's it's. Uh, so challenging and and yeah. so rewarding at the same yeah. time and i think like i have nothing but admiration for anyone who can face an addiction and and, and live through it and work on it on a daily basis yeah. it just just blows me away i echo that i think you know i know i've you know i'd i've been very fortunate to have you guys you know go on a journey with the meditation and you come in and done the work i offer in planet and we had some incredibly potent moments, didn't we? You know what mm. I mean? Like just talking about awareness, leaning into the meditation collectively. And, you know, just echoing what you've said there, Matt, is like we just got two beautiful men here who were, who were connected. Like Absolutely. these are the, these are the spiritual pioneers, 100%. you know what I mean? It, it, it's, the, it's the people working in the background. They're not wearing the spiritual mask. They're telling the truth. They're grounded. They're doing the work. They're showing yeah. up. It's real. And it's real. It's mm. absolutely real. Um, so, you know, leaning then into the final stages, is there anything else you'd like to uh, share, Ian? You know, just moving on um, and finishing off. Oh, I'd just like to say to anyone, if they are out there struggling, um, so I'm suffering silence for as long as I did. Because mm. when I did come in, um, I come in at 39, 39 years of age. And I know, that I'd had a problem when I've done the work on myself, that I actually had a problem when I was about 19, 20, mm. maybe even earlier with the stuff that Matt was saying, the, 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 under, the under stuff mm. from childhood. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, if anyone's out there and the, the, there is a solution, and the solution for me, I found, was in the 12-step programme. Yeah. And I also, I took a risk of 18 months because... There was stuff that I never took to a sponsor and a, and, and a friend guided me to um, a 12-step treatment centre. So I went in and, and done 12 steps in sharp. Um, I'm done that kind of work. And as Tony said, I'm still doing the work on myself. Yeah. I'm still learning every single yeah. day. Never stops, Every does single it? note doesn't stop. And, but I know one thing, uh, you know, for the stuff I've done, um, I was a parent on drugs and my kids never deserved, they deserved that set of right, but they had a sick dad. Yeah. Um, and they're proud of me today. You yeah. know, my eldest daughter, she's got three children. I've witnessed grandchildren being born in, in recovery. Um, my youngest son, he, you know, she's, she's a cancer nurse, my daughter, and my youngest son, he's a mechanic. My younger daughter, she's just told me she's having a baby. Mm. So I'm be expecting to be a granddad again. Um, and I'm just so grateful that they never gave up on me. Yeah. And they still know how, more, how important these that these meetings, my recovery comes before anything. Yeah. Because if I haven't got recovery, they haven't got a dad and yeah. I haven't got a life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's where I am with my, I love, I love this. I love waking up every morning. Us. Um, and I want, I'm any one to us, yeah. <laughs> But I remember my ex-partner saying to me, I want to get some fucking knobhead to walk here down the aisle. And oh, I used to kill me. Mm. To, and I'd go out and use on that. Yeah. I'd go out and use on that. Yeah. Um, and in 2013, I walked that little girl down the aisle. No. Clean and sober. That's the girl I snorted the gram of cocaine in front of. No. And that was like... Turning you know, points. Big, turn big moments. Yeah, yeah. Big, big moment, moment for me, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, but if anyone's out there struggling... Don't suffer in silence. There is a solution out there. And as I say, mine was in the 12 step recovery program and it works if you're working. So thank Lovely. you very much. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, thank Ian. you. Tony? Yeah, I'd just like to just echo what Ian just said. You know, there's, there's no need to suffer. 
that there is help out there. There's, you know, there's organisations like Bridge, Tom Allison, Al Sharp. There's, you know, there's, there's loads of organisations, it's professional that you can, mm. you know, you can reach out to. Um, you know, there's also the 12 steps, what me and Ian do, and, you know, to turn, just there's a helpline that you can phone, someone will come and pick you up if, yeah. if need be. Um, take you to your first meeting. You know, mm. you can go with a family member, they, they'll open the meeting up for you. Mm. Um, you know, so don't suffer, you know. Um, and, and no one's a hopeless case. Yeah. That the you know, every everyone's mm. worth saving. There's no hopeless case yeah. out there. Yeah. Everyone can turn their life around. Mm. If I can, then I believe anyone can. And yeah. I, I don't believe there's a hopeless case out there. Mm. I believe some people struggle more than others. Yeah. But I don't believe there's a hopeless case. You know, mm. and I, I believe they're all worth it. Yeah. Um, so you know, if you're struggling, and um, you think that you've got a problem, um, you know, reach out and get some help. Yeah, amazing, incredible advice, um, from um, you know, two men who uh, who've lived it, you know, been there, done it, wore the t-shirt, and um, you know, who are credits now to themselves and to the people around them, and um, yeah, I just I want to thank you for being here. Thank Wish you. Wish you all the luck and you know in your future endeavours. And um, mm-hmm. still need to get to one of them little AA meetings, don't I? Mean, but I'm, too, I'm yeah. coming, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm coming. He's building himself up. <laughs> <laughs> See your podcast first. <laughs> um, and don't then, be bling on any cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and then a special thank you to me, mate, sitting next to me and Matt Gunn. You know, he's uh, always just very eloquent, uh, super, super sweet. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and just offers a really wonderful perspective on things. Um, you know, in a really professional perspective as well, which is which is always good to good to uh, good to feel into. So, anyone listening out there, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, Podcast eighteen. We'll see you next time for more real conversation with real people. Nice one. Bye for now. Have a good evening. Creating spaces sponsored by the Scouse Guru app, an all-purpose meditation app that feeds into all your needs, developing peace of mind, increasing mental focus lowering stress levels while discovering inner stillness, awakening your potential and educating you on all matters related to human behaviour and personal development. Download the app for free on the App Store or get it on Google Play today.